Welcome back to the Curling Endgame series. This is the second video in this series where I'm going to go over last end scenarios and help you understand what the game plans are for each team in various competitive situations. In the first video, we did the tied in the final end scenario for the team with Hammer. So now we're going to follow up by doing that same situation without Hammer. Obviously not ideal to go into the last end needing the steal, but definitely still a winnable game at all levels. At the very highest levels, uh, it's become pretty hard to win in this situation. Although the no tick rule is helping to combat that a bit and, you know, even give the highest level teams a chance to steal in the eighth or tenth end or an extra end. So let's quickly first look at what the game plan should be uh, from shot number one. It's often said, especially by new skips, that it's easier to understand the strategy without the hammer than with it. And in this situation, that's definitely true. Because all you have to do is score one, you know what your game plan is without the hammer when you're trying to steal. Your goal is going to be to get a rock right here into the forefoot. Ideally, maybe just above the T-line. We don't like to be right covering the pin, at least not early in the end because then a very small tap can push us behind the T-line and leave our opponents counting. But, you know, top four to top button, and then get a couple guards up, uh, guard uh, for our lives, and leave our opponent with little or nothing they can do to score when we get to the end of the end. So how does that play out in practice? Well, there's really only one thing you want to do at the start of your end, which is have your lead throw a centerline guard. Now... You might want to put some thought in, especially if your lead is pretty consistent or you have sweepers that are excellent at judging weight, as to where exactly you put your centerline guards. You're going to throw two in almost every scenario. You don't want to be so impatient that as soon as we get a centerline guard up, we're going to come right around it. Instead, we're going to try to throw two guards, which means the guard I placed here, while a reasonable guard to steal with if you only have one, probably isn't where we want the rock in this um, uh, steal in the final end situation. Instead, we're going to try to get this rock either close to the house or very high, far away from the house the and closer to the hog line. The goal here being to get our two guards separated by as much as possible. Now, how close do we want this rock? Well, I know in a lot of ends, we really fall in love with getting as close to the house as possible. That makes this rock very flexible, right? It might be used to guard the um, the forefoot or the button, but it also can be tapped, it can be split, it can be run back, whatever you need to do with it. In the, excuse me. In this case, there's actually a little, two downsides to getting too close. One is that it could be run back on you by the other team. But uh, more importantly, we need to know the ice conditions and we need to know um, where we can put that rock and still draw around it to be buried. So if your ice is very straight, putting the rock this tight probably doesn't work for you. Whereas if you have ice with a good four, four and a half, five feet of curl, um, like in a competitive event, then certainly as tight as you want pretty much because you'll still be able to draw around that. Um, so let's, let's put this up here somewhere up front. Let's say our ice is, you know, reasonably swingy but we're only getting maybe like three feet of curl so we're like well if we put the rock there we can bury around it we feel there's a lot of good amount of late movement we feel good about burying there we then want to get our second guard up as a one guard ideally you know as close to the hog line just so that there's very little or no chance of our opponents making a double peel and kind of taking away our entire uh, guard structure here realistically in a club game it's probably hard to aim for that close to the, tea line, uh, the uh, hog line and keep the rock in play and not just hog it often. But even if you can have them separated by a few feet, like a situation like this, excellent. Not going to be easy for your rocks to be doubled off. They're both on the center line. And you can then, on your third rock, if, the, if this is the situation you're in, this is kind of just the dream scenario, come right around, bury that rock where we want it, and now you've got your game plan all set up, right? You've got your guarded rock that's very close to the pin 
that's going to be almost impossible for the Hammer team to beat. It's just that easy if the other team doesn't have any rocks and you make all your shots. <laughs> of course, we know that things don't really work out that way in the real world. So what I want to do is look at three common situations you might find yourself in as we get to the middle of the end and how that plays out uh, for you and what you can do to still keep your chances of stealing alive. So the first option is that things went horribly for you. doesn't really matter if the hammer team has anything in play here. Um, instead, what we're talking about here is you either put rocks in the house, through through, um, hog them. In any case, you don't have a good guard and... The hammer team may or may not have some rocks in play, but nothing that's helping you. In this situation, your only choice, at least for a while, is to keep throwing center line guards. Now we're out of the free guard zone rule period, so what's going to happen? Well, of course, the hammer team is going to come in and try to peel over and over again, right? Like, bang, knock that rock off. And hopefully there's rolls away or out completely. And you're going to go back and forth like this for a while. So you might be asking, what's the point of this if they can just keep peeling? Well, one, you're hoping for a miss or at least a partial miss. If you throw this guard and the hammer team either flashes or noses, even a nose works, right? You now have a great guard to use to go back to trying to steal more aggressively by, you know, coming around your guard now. Alternately, they can make the peel, but just off nose, and maybe roll out to here. This is not ideal, and we're not going to go around that rock right away, but at least it gives us something to work with later in the end, right? We, if we have to later in the end, and we'll talk about this more in a later section, if we have to, we can use guards like that to at least put some pressure on our opponent on their last rock, give them something they have to beat. Okay, our second scenario is one that we'll call combative right both teams have gotten some good shots and the hammer team has uh thrown around your center guards and has put rocks in the top of the forefoot um i've had conversations with other people at my curling club where they see like okay well if i'm gonna throw a center guard they come around i throw another center guard they come around again aren't i just in a ton of trouble and the answer is one, you're not in as much trouble as you think, but two, you're really in trouble because you came into the last end tied without hammer, so you are not supposed to win most of the time. If the hammer team plays well, makes all their shots, they are probably going to beat you. However, this situation is not a disaster. It's also a situation we're going to see more and more often again now that the no-tick rule is coming back into play, or I should say is becoming more ubiquitous. Um... Someone asked in the comments of the last video if we use it locally. My club does not, um, but because uh, USA Curling has adapted it now, I think you're going to see at least more competitive leagues, uh, many bond spiels, um, and certainly all championship events, even at lower levels of play, pr probably use this rule this season or next. And if you want me to imagine what it's going to be like five or ten years down the line, it's probably just going to be how everyone plays curling. It just is. Rules evolve, and that's where we're at. Uh, the point of that is that we would normally talk more about what happens if the hammer team is going to uh, try to play the tick shot on your guards. Really, that takes us closer to like scenario one, where there's not much to use, although you may have the corner guards we talked about. Like, you know, if uh, they try to peel and roll to the corner, you might get that with the tick shot too. Um, but honestly, a club play, that shot is not tried all that often, and to... As we said, more and more we're going to see uh, the no-tick rule implemented and teams are going to go back to the old school way of playing with Hammer here, which is get behind the guards first. So that's where we see ourselves now. And is it time to panic? No, not at all. Because ideally you left these guards up where you can get around them and it looks like you did because Red was able to get around with them, right? Well, you have these two guards. You don't actually need to remove these red rocks until you're out of rocks, right? Your last rock has to be counting. So what we're going to do you start coming to these rocks, uh, either with freezes or probably ideally slight taps. Like you might play something here with just back house weight and think about knocking these around a little bit. 
And hopefully, you see, if you make that shot, even after one shot, your situation has gotten way better. You still have your two guards. You have uh, two red rocks that are now accessible. You have one that's just behind the T-line that you could freeze on, potentially. And you have a yellow rock in the top eight that you could use for a tap, which could be like a tap-guard combination, right? You tap it, leave yours to at least somewhat guard it, even though they'd be relatively close together. Um, most likely... In these scenarios, if the hammer team skip is smart, they won't try to deal with anything in the house. They'll start peeling your center guards. Um, and you'll get back into some of what we saw in that first scenario, which was that um, they'll be peeling and you'll be putting them back at least for a little while um, just to maintain that strong central position you have. Uh, they don't want to get in a situation where they try something and then miss and you make it and now you have a counter, you know, way buried under all this junk. So a good skip will peel. If they don't peel and they try to mess around in the forefoot, you're real happy with that. That just means, like, say they take this situation and they're like, oh, we're going to tap this back to, to be even better. And then, you you know, you can come in and play a tap. And even if you're not counting but you're frozen, this is a mess and exactly what you're hoping to see <laughs> in these scenarios, right? A lot of junk. You know the scoring is going to happen really close to the button. And you're one shot away from scoring. Um, and at some point, you probably will be in position where you're counting because that red rock on the button isn't going to last very long. So that's situation number two. Situation number three is going to look real familiar to people who've been watching this video because this is what I set up at the beginning is like the dream scenario, right? You've made your first three shots. The hammer team has accomplished nothing. They've thrown through, uh, missed hits, uh, or they might have... You know, you can have this same scenario, but they have a rock out here that's, you know, you're not worried about chasing. They just have it in case it's the last rock in place so they can win, perhaps. But in any case, they've done nothing relevant to this fight for the forefoot. Um, they might even have something, maybe they threw a bad rock right behind the T-line and it makes your position even stronger. Regardless, you're in a position where you are in complete control of the end. And at this point, we're going to say it's like your fourth shot. Like, this is after three shots each. You're on your second, second shot. Remember, if you were trying to score two here, you'd draw around again, but there's really no need for that now. The best thing you can do is to start clamping down on this position as hard as you can. That doesn't mean you have to be out of the house, of course, but you're going to want maybe a third guard. Even if you try to throw a third guard and clip and split, something like this is very good. You, anything you can do to make it almost impossible to get at your yellow rock. Is it ever going to be completely impossible? No, they can make double peels. They can make um, runbacks. You know, they can try to set something up where they, they draw in, you know, close to your rock and then use a second rock to, to uh, eliminate yours. But in this situation where you are completely in command, just clamp down harder, get your one. Remember, just like I said in the last video, it doesn't matter if you get one or eight. So there's no sense in playing anything that is like geared towards getting two or multiple steel steal that one rock and hold on for dear life um most of the time in these situations by the way in all of these situations it's unlikely you're going to be hitting red until uh, or the hammer team is red here until very late in the end in very specific situations however i will give you an example i said that where you might hit i did say there's the idea that they could try to set something up by like going here so that they then have this short little run. You may, and let's say it's especially if it's out here and it sets up like a hit and roll off, you may want to hit this first and ideally roll in a little just to take that play away from them, right? But even that is really a defensive play. It's not about getting two. It's you're taking away one of their resources where they could potentially remove your counter. So yeah, when you're in command like this, just clamp down harder and harder on that one rock. Uh, if you ever get in a position where, you know, you're hitting rolling to sit a second or the best way for your guard is to throw one on the top of the house and you're sitting two, that's fine. But there's no actual purpose here to sitting two. Just get your one. And that's what you need to win the game. Now, most people who have played curling for any length of time, and especially anyone who's skipped, is well aware that steals often come down to the last shot of the end, right? The hammer team almost always has a chance 
to score on their last rock. Now, if they have no chance, there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> You're just going to be in such a dominant position that you don't have to worry about strategy at all. However, there are a lot of different scenarios from really promising to really unpromising that um, where we still have to think about our last shot uh, or our last couple shots with our skip rocks. Uh, we're going to look at a few of those here and kind of start on the end where things look really good for us and then talk about how we can try to generate a steal even when things look pretty bleak. All right, in this position, we're obviously in great shape. We've got our rock in the forefoot. We've got a whole bunch of guards. And in any reasonable ice conditions, I don't think there's really a play to hit and remove our counter right now. So what we have to do in this situation, and we're going to suggest that we're looking at the house heading into our last shot, so each team has one more shot remaining, is figure out if we didn't throw... What would red do here? Uh, in this case, there are probably two shots, right? Red might draw in and be able to beat us here on the corner. Or they might be able to try this hard in off. You know, either to hit us out or, I guess, to even hit and tick and roll in and count. So we have to decide which of those shots seems more realistic, and we're going to guard that. The point here is not to figure out which one's more realistic. That could depend on ice conditions, the players. Probably the draw in most cases. Probably most of the time you're going to want to throw something up over here. Take away the draw and, you know, leave them the in off. Uh, but, you know, that can vary. So, the point, real point is here, what we don't want to do when we have this go to position is just decide we don't really know what to do. We're going to just guard further because that guard isn't necessary. Right, they're not going to go directly after our yellow rock, and we know it. And if they do, they're hoping for a miracle. They're maybe hoping, if, if, if they were going to go directly, they might have to do like a double run back, hit ours to knock it out, and lose the, the rock that was run into it. Yeah, not, not really a realistic scenario, not something they're going to probably try here. Um, so while we talk about when we're in a dominant position to just clamp down, clamp down, clamp down, be sure at the end of the end, the last one or two shots, that if, if your opponents, if the hammer team have any way of potentially scoring, that's now what you're focused on taking away from them. Here's a more intermediate scenario where we've done reasonable at setting up a steal, but the hammer team definitely has room to play with, right? Anything that hits full eight foot will beat us at the end, and we certainly haven't taken away that shot from them. And there's no realistic way to completely prevent them from doing that. Uh, let, let's pretend that on their final vi uh, vice rock, they peel again. Which is likely what they do. Just keep the game open. At least until we get to skip rocks. So now we're on skip rocks. And we have a couple things to think about here. Chances are on our first rock, we'll just guard again. Put a guard up. But now the hammer team might have an opportunity to come around us. They probably shouldn't play to the center, so I shouldn't say come around us. But they could perhaps just draw like back here and say, all right, we're counting. You've got to hit us, or you've got to do something to win, you know, stay alive in the game. And we just got our draw. Um, so in a situation like this, what do we do? Now both, both teams have one rock left, and while we're in an okay position... We're not in the best position. Um, well, there are a few options, of course. There are resources we can use. Um, we can try to come around our own and count. So like here, the problem being with this rock so deep, we probably can't entirely bury. So if you're going to throw this shot, the way to do it is actually on the other side. Because if you're half buried and you get to like here, there is the possibility of a jam at least. And if... They try to throw the hit for the win. Roll away a bit. And yours just lands here. Now you've won the game. So that's one reasonable option, right? If we think we can get there. If the ice conditions don't allow for that, we might try to freeze. Or at least sit in front of this, right? Where at least we're making them throw another draw. One that has to land on here. Anything from a dead freeze to pretty close is good. Because they can't lose both rocks and roll away with their shooter. 
here, as we do have a second rock counting. You could even, you know, get down and tap the miniature two and sit two. Not really important in this scenario, but sometimes it matters. Um, where, you know, that can tempt them into drawing instead of hitting. Um, or, if you want to just let them draw again, you can hit... And either stick or roll away. There are benefits to both. Um, sticking, you may cut down the scoring area a bit, but you're leaving backing they can use. Probably not recommended in this case. You're probably better off rolling away. If this rock was more open, you'd want this one to hang on because then if they hit and rolled out, you'd win. Um, in this scenario, they're not going to hit. They're going to draw. So it doesn't really matter if it sticks around. What you don't want to leave is something like right here where it's just that natural draw to the, to the forefoot and they can use this as a backer. Maybe in your dream scenario, you hit roll right under, and that's the best you can do, right? Um, but you're still leaving them with a draw with some backing now, so it's less than ideal. As you can see, none of these feel particularly great, right? But remember, you're not in trouble. You at least are gonna force them to make a shot, and the shot you choose on your last rock should really be geared towards what you wanna leave them. If you're okay with them having a draw with backing, potentially, you probably are just going to play the uh, the hit here and hope you get a good roll, or at least, you know, not a terrible roll, but like right there, where again, they have that draw and, you know. Um, but if you, if you can get the roll under, you might tempt them into drawing where they could, you know, clip a guard. If they're narrow or if they're a little heavy, they go right by, and they only have, you know, a relatively small area to score in. Um, if you just stick here, yeah, they have backing, but they probably aren't going to be able to throw a hit at that. They can, but obviously they can't roll away very far. Um, you might tempt them into hitting. You might, or they may draw, and same thing. They've got to make the draw at least, so you've accomplished something. Uh, the key is to make sure you do something where you're scoring. I think in this situation, as I've been laying out these options, my... At the club level especially, my preference is probably playing this as a hit and roll. Just hoping we get there and leaving them with a challenging shot. It's not going to be as good as it was before, but it is something, right? Now, they may not draw back there. They may draw anywhere up here where, you know, your hit and roll is much better. Or they may just, again, be willing to go down to the last shot. I think you're going to see this quite often when your rock in the house isn't that good. leave you wide open again going into your last shot. Once again, there are options here, although here I would say there are really two options. You can just throw the guard back and say, hey, beat me, draw to the eight foot. Uh, the problem is as you get better, more and more people you play against are gonna be able to draw the eight foot, so you won't win that all that often. Low level club play, you might win it quite frequently, but even then you kind of know people can draw the eight foot. Um, it, even relatively inexperienced players will often hit the 8-foot when they try to draw the button. So, not a high percentage way to win the game, but a way to play if you know the opposing skip doesn't have great draw weight and you're willing to take your chances with this. The other option, as I'm sure most people could guess, you could play this little tap. You make it perfect. You've left them with a very tough double uh, to win the game and perhaps even... Um, they might even roll out on the double, um, you know, blanking and sending it to an extra end or whatever. Uh, they, the problem here, of course, is that you often won't make the tap perfect. You might leave it like that and give yourself an open hit. You might hit it deep and I'll put it even deeper and give them still a even better draw than they had before because now there's a little backing to use. Um, you know, you may hit it way too hard and just make your situation worse because you've left now a rock that's a rock higher up, giving them even more room to draw to. Finally, we should look at what happens when things just haven't gone your way. They've peeled all your center guards. There's little to nothing left. There may still be uh, some resources you can use, though, to at least make their last shot as hard as possible. Here's a few different examples. One, they've been peeling and they've left either one of their guards or your guard out on the wing somewhere. In this case, 
on your first rock, you're likely just going to come around one of these guards, if you can. Why are we doing this? Well, it's a little late, too late to throw this. If we throw this, they will peel again. And now we've got one rock left. And, and if they peel this again, we have one rock left. And we have to throw in now, obviously. We do the same thing, and now it's just an open house for them to draw to, right? So that doesn't really help us much. So instead, we're going to come around on our first rock. And the hammer team often will just peel this guard now. So we're in a situation again where, hey, look, we're, we're not doing great, right? <laughs> we, we have one open rock on the wings, and both teams have one rock left. We will ignore this one that was just used for an example earlier. It doesn't really play into this scenario. What can we do? If you really want to, you can, of course, guard this and just tell them, just like before, draw the 8-foot. And this is not much worse than the scenario we had before where we had a rock in the top of the 8-foot that they had to outdraw. The only difference now is they will have a draw to the button as opposed to having to draw around our center guards. They have a clean draw to the button. This does matter. Most of what we're doing in the game, more often than not, are throwing rocks that curl towards the button and um, have, you know, on, on paths that we know very well. Um, and the most danger in that shot is often the fact that we could crash on something. In this case, there is no worrying about crashing. And they have the entire center line to use from the top of the 8 foot to the bottom of the 8 foot. So if they're anywhere close on line, they don't have to worry at all about uh, crashing on anything, wicking off anything, and they have a huge swath of real estate there uh, in the center of the ice that they can draw to. So maybe not ideal in most situations. What you might try to do is throw a second one on the center line, somewhere like here. Now you've left the hammer team and the opposing skip with much more of a decision to make. They have a choice. They can either hit one of your rocks, likely these out well, hit the outside one, and try to roll to beat this one. Remember, they can't nose either one. If they nose, they lose. Or they can draw to the center. Again, you, you've made your rock a little better, so you've cut down the scoring area by a few inches. Now with the risk of if you throw to the middle, you do have to be careful. You might have to play it a little further outside than you normally would because you don't want to risk crashing on that guard. Well, not a guard, but crashing on that rock in the top of the house. So at least here, you, you've put your opponent in a situation where they have to do something. <laughs> they have to think. They have concerns no matter what their shot is. If they go for the hit, they know they can't nose or hit on the outside. That loses. If they go for the draw, they might have to pick a slightly unfamiliar line or be risking wicking this top rock and, uh, and um, losing the game that way. And worst case scenario, you've at least shaved down the scoring area by a few inches all the way around, which is more significant than you may think. Um, just, you know, you're, you're shrinking the entire diameter of a circle by a few inches, so it takes away a reasonable amount of real estate on, on the house that they can draw to. All right, well, if that doesn't work out, we get down to our last rock. Well, and there's nothing in play. You know, you probably want to throw near the button. You may want to throw it a little off center just because uh, you want to leave them with um, a less familiar path than the center line. If there's a line where hits have been a little wonky, you might want to go out to that line, especially if it's in, like, the 8-foot area. Because, again, at least you can get them thinking. One, they know they have to hit and stick to win if there's nothing around. Maybe that line just isn't that reliable. And even if they're pretty sure they can hit the rock, they're not sure they'd st they'll, they'll stick and they don't want to play another end. And there's enough room that they can draw, but it's not the easiest draw ever because you've cut down the scoring area a bit. So, you know, you, you want to put them at a decision point, at least, when there's nothing in play. Um, at least to, to, to put some doubt in their mind. I mean, that's psychological, but it's part of the game. Put some doubt in their mind, give them two shots that are both reasonably easy, but unclear which one's best. Um, you know, most of the time, 
at club level, I think people will try to hit and roll, you know, back towards the middle or hit and stick and on the nose at worst. Um, but you never know, right? You, you just don't know. I mean, especially at the club level, shots are missed all the time. You may be able to get into an extra end if you put this on a wonky line. Or if they try to decide to draw, we're back into the win or lose scenario where, hey, not everyone's going to make this draw all or even the vast majority of the time. So you'll, you'll give yourself a chance to win. So what are our key points here? Well, remember, if you're playing tied without the hammer in the final end, you're just looking to steal one. And that means getting a protected rock as close to the pin, ideally above the pin, as possible. If you get into a great position, just clamp down on that rock that's your counter. Hold on for dear life. Try everything you can to give the hammer team uh, as few opportunities or as difficult opportunities as possible to outcount you. On the other hand, if the hammer team plays well and starts peeling rocks, the best thing you can do is keep trying to set up that situation where you, you're going to get to the button. Get, keep putting guards up. Hope you get a peel. Hope you, or sorry, hope you get a flash. Hope you get a nose hit on a peel, or hope you get left with a usable guard. Any of these scenarios will give you something to work with, and it's better than just desperately and randomly throwing rocks into the house in the hopes that they flash. When we get later in the end, especially as we get to skip rocks, we have to think about what's our most realistic opportunity to steal. If we're in great shape, it's easy. We just keep guarding up that rock, taking away whatever the hammer team has as resources. If we're not in such great shape, we have to become the resourceful ones, figuring out ways to give our opponents difficult decisions, uh, shots on lines that haven't been very playable or have had some, you know, uh, some strangeness to them have been unreliable throughout the game, um, or at least leaving them with a decision to make where maybe we can get into their heads a little bit, get them thinking between two different shots uh, in a spot where, you know, that might be enough to throw off uh, their routine and lower their chances of making whichever shot they do pick. So I hope that's been helpful. This has been the second of our curling endgame videos. I hope that uh, you've liked these. I will get into scenarios where either team is up one or down one. I will also do with the hammer team up two or without hammer. Uh, sorry, with the hammer team down two or the non-hammer team up two. And then we'll probably do one video that covers all the scenarios that are wider gaps than that. Because you may play those scenarios. You very well will sometimes. You're not going to shake... Say, you know, if you have to steal two, you won't shake if you have to take three with the hammer. But your situation is a little bit more desperate, um, and we can probably cover that a little quicker than the closer game scenarios. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Love it if you could subscribe to the channel or share the video with friends. Um, the first video proved pretty popular, and I'm hoping this one is the same. If you want to support the channel, there is a link to the Patreon in the description. Just had a few more people join the Patreon in the last week or so. Thanks to those of you who did. Uh, and if you want to get videos a little early or get ex uh, access to some exclusive videos, that's where you'll find that kind of stuff. So until next time, thanks for watching and good curling, everyone.